Hi everybody, it's Dandruff, and welcome to my coverage of the 5th conference at E3 2018 with Ubisoft. I've got no idea who these presenters are, but then again, I'm just thankful it's not Aisha Tyler. A dancing marching panda? Well done, Ubisoft. Well done. I have no idea what the hell this is for. I'm guessing the next Let's Dance game. Anyone else a little turned on by the Squid Woman? Wow, they hired a full marching band, again! Well done, Ubisoft! And yep, it's Let's Dance 2019, obviously releasing sometime next year. Space, the final frontier. Oh, oh wait, can I actually say that? Uh, anyway, we join a ship that is skimming across a planet's rings. I didn't recognize this at first, but this is the prequel slash remake to Beyond Good and Evil, Beyond Good and Evil 2. There's something about the CGI that is extremely realistic. It's very good. After seeing this, label me on board. I want to play this one, and I want to get to know this world. Even better still, we get our first look at gameplay and how some of the mechanics will work. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this next one. I've got to mull it over a little bit. But you can submit to have your artwork, whether it be an illustration, a drawing, or even music, added to the game. And then for some reason they bring out actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt to explain pretty much what I just explained. Rainbow Six Siege is up next, and it's a little surprising that they're showcasing a more than two-year-old game. Though the player base has just grown and grown to over 35 million players. And they showcase a few of the different tournaments that Rainbow Six Siege will be featured at. Bring on the guy in the America suit riding a motorcycle. The back of his uniform says Trials, which means that uh, he just... He just fell over onto a TV and broke the stand. So yeah, this is a new Trials game, and it's all about crashing in style. The outrageous stunts continue in Trials Rising, the next title in the franchise. You can sign up for the closed beta at TrialsGame.com and releasing for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch in February 2019. Oh boy, The Division 2. Let's see if this presentation is better than Microsoft's. The presenter lays out a setting of a world infected with a deadly virus, and the United States is picking up what pieces it has left. Okay... Okay, uh, yeah, th th this is a much better way of getting me interested in your game. I have to point out, too, that this airplane flew for miles, and that isn't even my issue with it. All the thing says is help. Just help. What good is that going to do anybody? Back to info about The Division 2, the game will be getting 8-man raids for its end game. 3 DLC are coming to provide episodic content, and all will be released for free. The Division 2 releases on March 15th, 2019. Oh boy, rabbit ears, this is something I wasn't expecting. We are getting some Donkey Kong DLC for Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. If I've learned anything about this year's E3, it's live musical performances make your show better. I think this one speaks for itself, and you should go back and watch the entire unedited performance for yourself to be able to to take in all of the music and visuals. I was really pleased with this one. The DLC is coming on June 26th for everyone and June 25th for season pass holders. Coming to us from Ubisoft Singapore is their answer to Sea of Thieves, Skull and Bones. Obviously they're going for a much more mature and dark theme. Ah, ah, that guy said the F word, that means he's a badass. And best of all, we not only get some explanation of the mechanics, we get some actual gameplay too. Oh, this is really cool. They changed their sails to camouflage themselves and hide in plain sight. That's the kind of stuff I want out of a pirate game. Oh shit, it's on! The Portuguese are pissed! I have to say too, I got lost when watching this. I was really into it and I was cheering them on when they took that big Portuguese ship down. Cheered even more when the players turned on each other for the treasure. Elijah Wood? Really? Well, Frodo Baggins has shown up and founded a game company that has created a game called Transcendence. So, call me officially creeped out on this one. I have no idea what's going on, and it's actually really disturbing. I am not going to go anywhere near this one because I don't play horror games, and now I need my Charizard. Oh, okay, this looks cool. I've never seen this before, and it looks like a completely new IP. So, they keep showing this toy spaceship and equipping different weapons to it, and those weapons appear in the game. And if that means that if I buy the toy, I have the things in game, then I will buy all of the toys. Starlink is the name of this game, and may I direct you to my Patreon page? I promise I will spend all of the money on Starlink toys. Star Fox? But Star- what? Star Fox? Uh, uh, Star, Star Fox. Th this is Ubisoft. They- they know that this is- Star- this is Star Fox? Star Fox? Star Fox. Oh my gosh, it's Mr. Miyamoto from Nintendo. I am elated. This was completely unexpected. I really hope that this is another Star Fox game. And it's not, it's it's just exclusive DLC for Starlink for Nintendo Switch. Don't worry, they really got my hopes up too. Oh, For Honor. People still play For Honor. 
Okay, sure then, why not? Good news because Ubisoft is giving away the starter edition of For Honor on New Play, and the offer starts today and is good for the next week. DLC is coming called Marching Fire, and it will be here adding Chinese warriors to the game along with new single player content. A new 4v4 Castle Siege mode is coming called Breach, which not only pits your skills directly against other players, but includes objective based gameplay, adding more depth and diversity. For Honor Marching Fire releases on October 16th, 2018. The Crew 2 is coming up next with an open beta being held held on June 21st. There will be a link below to sign up. It doesn't matter how you like to travel, whether it be sports, car, motorcycle, speedboat, or airplane, The Crew 2 has you covered. Moving right along, we have our first look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey, following the story of a young Greek orphan. I'm kind of hoping that Ubisoft isn't back to the annual releases of Assassin's Creed, otherwise we're just going to end up back in the same situation as Assassin's Creed Unity. Great news too for people who love diversity, because you'll be able to choose between a male and a female character. Always nice to see that, but I don't think it's always necessary. We finish up this presentation with some actual gameplay, which seems to get more and more rare each year. How dare we gamers want to see games instead of just pretty CGI? This is pretty much what you would expect out of an Assassin's Creed game, and it's really nice because we see some mechanics like the talent tree. And then we even get a full-size, large-scale combat sequence. And then out comes the CEO and founder of Ubisoft, Yves Gilmont, to give a closing speech. All in all, a really nice performance. Well, that about wraps it up for my coverage of the Ubisoft conference at E3 2018. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next time.